Hello, good evening. This is Kalsot English, Prabhit Rojanaprit. Um, we are uh, going to have a special interview. As you all may know, this is APEC Summit Week here in Bangkok. So we're going to talk with um, an international relations lecturer and expert, Ajahn Vilod Ali from Tamasat University. I will chat with him about the impact, the importance and benefits of APEC Summit here in Bangkok. And uh, later on the uh, program, we will hear from the Deputy Spokesperson of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Kun Natapanu Nopakun, telling us what's the significance of the APEC um, 2022 Summit here in Bangkok. Enjoy! Good evening, this is Prabhupit Rojanaprit from Kalsot English. Uh, we are holding a special interview on the EPEC uh, 2022 week, as we all know by now, that Bangkok and the Thai government in particular is hosting uh, the EPEC summit here in Bangkok. Some of the world leaders already in town, uh, such as French President Emmanuel Macron, the Vietnamese president arrived uh, yesterday. The French president had just had lunch with Prime Minister General Prayut and Chen Osha. So I feel that it's only befitting to be talking about international relations, the implications of APEC um, on Thailand and beyond. I'm delighted to have with us or with me this evening and uh, Birod Ali, uh, a well-known uh, international relations lecturer at Tamasat University. Good evening, Ajahn Birod. Good evening, Good evening, everyone. So let, let me just start by asking you about what, what do you make of the significance of the EPEC summit here in Bangkok? I mean, there have been a lot of debate from different perspectives as to whether it's a real meaningful event for Thailand? Mm. Uh, I, I would say the government would wish it to be a meaningful meeting there yeah, because uh, it's, it's, it's a very important meeting where it's one of the largest economic bloc in the world. Mm -hmm. And what the government wants out of it, apart from BCG and so on, I think mm -hmm. they want to have some sort of a bilateral agreement right. that, that could help, you know, uh, to... Uh, develop further free trade agreement, which is for the past eight years, uh, mm -hmm. this has been something that has been lacking uh, right. for Thailand. Uh, it, earlier this year, we the RCEP was uh, in, in use, and you could right. really see that the export numbers grew out of uh, being able to access uh, mm -hmm. China by using RCEP. So I right. think for them, this is a very important key moment where they could push further uh, bilateral free trade agreement and i think so far they have concluded with one which is with australia mm -hmm. but apart from that there's still another 20 countries <laughs> that that, that right. needs to you know go on and, and that is something that we have to wait and see right i mean the the whole notion that the thai government um, as a host during this apec will, is pushing for an, an epic white um, FTA. How realistic is it? I, because even the yeah. Thai, I read some material. Even the Thai government said this is a medium, if not a long term thing. But yes. if possible, it will be the it will become the largest trading block in the world. Yes, there are two tracks. Uh, people with the first track is to create what we call FTAAP, which mm -hmm. is something uh, very similar to TPP. APEC wants to create something so called a comprehensive agreement. Because right. now the bilateral thing, the problem is uh, it's very slow. It takes mm -hmm. a lot of time. And mm -hmm. when you host this every year, the theme changes. And then it means that you have to keep on adding in some other things into the agreements. And it never ends. Right. Yeah. So, right. so the idea is that they want to create this FTAAP, which China has pushed forward, if I'm not mistaken, since 2014. They have been very right. keen in doing that. But yes, uh, the trade war with COVID, now with Russia-Ukraine mm -hmm. thing. So that FTAP has subsided. Right. Which is sad. I think that that would be the real core comprehensive agreement where everyone would benefit out of the agreement. Correct. But for the second layer, <coughs> excuse me, for the second track, That's which it. is Thailand's track, while 
uh, accessing what we call bilateral meetings, uh, only one that has been done in Australia, I would say that's not enough. Uh, at the moment, uh, we have to go further in order to access larger markets. Um, US is one of our largest partners, and we have mm -hmm. been what we call gaining more and more market share. While with right. China, we are gaining more market share as well, but we are in deficit. And in order to grow the economy after the uh, COVID-19 subsides, I think this is very important because we have left ourselves out of the equation for very long. Uh, other countries in Southeast Asia now has already, you know, concluded free trade agreement with EU. Thailand doesn't have one. Uh, a lot of countries have gone into CPTPP, even though the US is not there, but Vietnam, Indonesia, and other countries have benefited a lot. So mm -hmm. I think if you look at the key um, um, issue here is to be able to secure as much as free trade agreement as much as possible. I think that's the right. main important key. But weirdly, Thailand has not been really interested in pushing this issue very clearly, right. which they should have. They want to talk about BCT, which if I go back into uh, APEC 2021 website in New Zealand, New Zealand has already created a 40-year plan sorry, a 20-year plan called right. 2020, uh, 2040 Putrajaya Plan for Sustainability. They've already right. created a, a platform for this. Now we want to propose something new. Apart from that, uh, we showcase a lot of on our, as the government calls it, the soft power, food, <laughs> uh, you know, Thai cultural things, which I think it's not the key main important point that we really have to be, you know, really looking into. So I think what happened is that the focus has been blurred. For the things that we need to do, it's not being really done. Uh, and for the things mm -hmm. that I think it's not that important, we have been focusing too much on that. Right. The so, soft so power. People, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah. You're so some people. Finish. So some people say that it's just this. This is just a meeting for Jennifer Yu to have a uh, kind of a space in the international arena that he has succeeded. Uh, to have some sort of an international meeting that has been, uh, what we call, done in Thailand. So it means that he's been accepted by the international arena. You know, he's one of the leaders that could be accepted and so on. I think, I think that's the only main key message I think the government would wish to, you know, uh, push forward. Apart from so, that, you know, as I said, the economy and so on, not that much, not that much. But still, so is have it to fair? A couple of days. Is it fair? The other day, a former senior diplomat, Kun Gopsak Shutikun, said uh, Apex, some foreign diplomats in Bangkok, uh, foul mouth, according to him, <laughs> uh, refer to Apex as another Prayut election campaign. And we all know that there's going to be an election uh, in the probably sometime early or, or soon next year. Uh, what do you think? It, I mean, is it fair for for foreign diplomats or even Thai those who are against General Prayut General Cha? I, I would agree. To look at it. You would agree or would not? I would agree, uh, P. Pravid, because if you look back in other countries, we have been hosting APEC for one year now. Is but the message coming out is we are saying that, okay, we have agreed and we are going to do one, two, three, four in the future. So it means mm -hmm. that for the past year, nothing much has been done. And as we all know, the way things has been pushed forward is just for the sake of General Peru to have a better look in the international arena. And if you talk to academics like Ajahn Pitt, you know, he uses a very good word. He says that we are just, you know, we are just very good in doing protein. <laughs> like we, we, we can throw the table. Yeah, mm -hmm. we, we, we can just do that. Good. Yes, because if right. you go back to ASEAN meeting a couple of years back that we hosted, we ended up with something like this irrelevant, insignificant. And it was just to show that, okay, General Perut has been accepted. And you could see the rhetoric that would come after this is that, look, nobody has any problem with me. I'm not a dictator. I've been elected. You know, I've been accepted in the international arena, right. blah, blah, blah. You know, and this is my next plan, which links back to APEC, links back to DCG, which has, he has been talking for the past couple of years. Nobody knows what it is, but, but I think he would like to use this as a springboard to go forward into the election mm -hmm. next year. Mm -hmm. Or he's okay. trying to create some sort of a legacy. If his term as a prime minister completes mm -hmm. in the next two and a half years, at least I think he's looking for another post to have and 
you know, these are the legacies that might be able to push him into a certain position. Now, I'm going to try to be an advocate for the Thai government, although my, my stance is well known. Uh, look, the other day, the spokesman of the Thai foreign ministry, Kun Thani Sangrat, said, you know, at least the immediate gains out of this APEC uh, 2022 summit here in Bangkok is that over the past many months, since the beginning of the year, um, about 10,000 foreign visitors have arrived, okay, and that helped boost the economy. And just during the meeting, which is this week, um, yeah, he, he said 2,200 foreign journalists have registered and most would, would already be in town. Uh -huh. These are very immediate uh, benefits to the Thai um, tourism and uh, hotel industries, for example. Uh -huh. Uh, what's more, uh, yesterday we have seen the Muay Thai Sham, you know, mm. uh, Bo 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 uh, demonstrated. And I, I, I mean, things like that, including Thai food, dance, and there'll be some lights and sounds uh, along the Chapriya River. Uh, the, the point is that these will be publicized, um, um, disseminated through various mediums by the foreign media and that can't be bad for the thai uh economy and reputation what, what, what would you say to that i mean and, and that itself probably should make it worth okay if we remove general Prayut from the equation and just look at the fact that okay it's muay thai thai boxing food and other things are being promoted and and these foreign journalists would probably be reporting a bit on that isn't that okay. a bad thing? I mean, isn't it's, that not, a good it's, thing? it's not a bad thing, but three over three billion baht invested in APEC. I don't think it's it's it will it will help to cover that, you know, the right. expenses and most of the things that they are trying to project into the you know global media like food or Thai boxing is something that everybody knows. Now, if right. when you think about Thailand, you think about all these things anyway. Now, for us, what we need to go forward is just mm -hmm. showing these things enough. Enough. How could you? monetize or capitalize on it mm -hmm. like how you know thai boxing was interesting but eventually in the international arena there were some other types of you know events like mma and all these things were created instead mm -hmm. and there's a massive economy that goes around it can thai right. boxing be able to do that no it's still a very local thing now and mm -hmm. even for thai boxers if you want to go you have to join into that now thai dance corn and all these things is very hard to access Mm -hmm. And you say that, okay, there would be a couple of thousand people coming in and so on. Yeah, but it's not significant. Like Ajahn Superbud said, she has said that if, what, if the government wants to come back yeah, to the normalcy of the rate of growth, at least before COVID, you need at least 2 million tourists to be in Bangkok or to be in Thailand each month. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. That's mm -hmm. where we need to go into. So for... Mm -hmm. A diplomat to say that okay, we are just getting ten thousand more and so on. It's insignificant. It it, it doesn't right. play a role in really, you know, shifting the Thai economy mm. uh, back into where it should be. As I was abroad a couple of weeks ago, everywhere is packed. People with France is packed. Europe is packed. Abu you Dhabi just came from. Packed. You just came back from France, right? France, yes, and it was packed. Right. So so everyone is ready now. What you need to do is to gain more people, you know, to come to Thailand for tourism. And right. I think the numbers is still lacking. And mm -hmm. as we know, we have been very dependent on Chinese uh, tourists. Uh, China is still yet closed because of the zero COVID, you know, policy. So far, what you have done in order to get more tourists coming from other places, i.e. such as new market like India, Southeast Asia, or maybe Europe and America. I think, I think we have to work further. Now thinking right. on a minimum, you know, like, oh, at least some people are coming. I think that's a very bad way of thinking because realistically, we have to go back to that old number that we succeeded in, mm -hmm. you know, uh, pro creating around... Pre-COVID, pre you mean? Right. Yes, we have to go back to that possible. But mm -hmm. I would say APEC is not helping. Yes, mm -hmm. we would be on the stage, but two meetings before this, ASEAN meeting and G20 meeting has already stolen that thunder. <laughs> so now everyone would say that, okay, this is a good kind of a holiday for a bit. Okay. okay. Now, look, still, I will 
try to defend the government of General General Shah. I he just had lunch, and since you just came back from France, I mean, what do you make of it? A tete a tete, you know, a lunch where he could see eye to eye with the French President Emmanuel Macron. Uh, he hosted lunch uh, earlier today at the government's house, and as a result, but you'd said, oh, he will now resume pushing for a Thai. <laughs> Uh, EU FTA, and of course, we all so know that uh, President Macron is very keen to push the uh, French Propel Indo Pacific mm -hmm. strategy, which Thailand is part of that scheme. Mm -hmm. uh, it can't be bad again, right? I mean, the fact that Prayut, uh, the Thai Prime Minister, okay, we can, uh, you know, we can question his mm -hmm. legitimacy, but at least. The fact that the French president is in town, just had lunch and had a uh, probably a rather relaxing um, um, lunch together to talk about how to upgrade the Thai bilateral relations to that of a strategic partnership. It can't mm -hmm. be bad, right? Is it that? I mean, would we, are you not giving some brownie points to General? Well, it, 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 it's it's fine. It's fine. Not a problem. But people, we don't don't forget before uh, election a couple of years back, General Prayut went to France. Bought a lot of stuff from the French, but the French <laughs> didn't buy anything more from us, you know. So, so yes, it's a diplomatic word, words, mm -hmm. it's, it's nice words, and so on. Uh, there's a lot of French investment in Thailand, uh, which needs to be protected, and, and they need mm -hmm. to make sure that it grows. Uh, but one thing for us, when we look at the numbers, one thing that has been growing tremendously uh, in regards to trade between Thai and France is ammunition. Mm. We are buying more ammunition from France, and we really have to think about whether is this something that really would benefit the economy or benefit the people, or is just you know benefiting uh, the leaders or the military itself. Mm -hmm. uh, who, who By saying that, budget. that's <laughs> right. By saying that, are you in at least near total agreement with the small number of protesters that have been protesters since I think? Over the past few days, including today, uh, close enough to the venue of the summit itself, you know, at the Asok Montri, which is just a 10 minutes walk to the Queen's Ricket uh, National Convention Center. Do you agree when they say that EPIC is basically a sort of event that would just benefit the rich and the governments? But not the ordinary people. Is that As, a fair a, a fair assessment? Uh, yes, people with because uh, internationally, if you read academic work uh, written by Kylie or many other political economists, they would say right. that more these kind of trade. It's not that it's not it's 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 only has a positive effect. It has a negative effect side of it as well. And one of the big negative side of these type of agreements, even though the economy grows, we can see that we are benefiting to trade out of these type of agreements. But people, especially those who are not in the big businesses, because you have only forum for CEOs, you don't have forum for SMEs, you don't have forum for farmers, to 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 participate in these kind of agreements. So most of the agreements would be propelled out of the needs and the interests of the big capital. And this is not something new. We have seen this starting from the uh, WTO meeting in Seattle from 1999 onwards. This has been a pattern. And it seems that um, all these uh, outcries uh, by the NGOs, by the civil society has been more and more accepted, at least in the West that it's legitimate, it has um, basis. And in these type of meetings, you need to be more inclusive. And I, and I think that's, that's the part which is missing. Where, how are we going? We should have used this particular meeting and create what we call various different path pathways. You have the top meeting, you have the business meeting, you should have academic and NGO and civil society participating in various different layers as well. Right. And then I would say all these type of agreement, especially if something comes out of BCG, which has been kind of a label greenwash for large companies for the past 10 years. There have been evidences, studies done very clearly on it that would benefit us. But now Thai government is doing something, you know, that 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 it's very good in doing, which is shunning out, you know, these type of voices and trying to reflect that these um, comments are irrelevant and that these people are here to, you know, create um, 
massive havoc to the meeting, which could have been done peacefully and so on. But you have to understand that you can't make an agreement only on the top level by not listening to the concerns uh, of right. the people who are be what we call being affected by the movement of these policies. And greenwash is not new. It's something it has been discussed for the past decade. And, and because of that in Europe, you know, the regulations have become much more tighter. But at the same time, you know, all these sustainability thing has declined as well at the same time, right. because, because it's, 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 it has to make sure that all these changes needs to be made for the interest of the larger picture of the economy rather than just of the companies. So okay. I think we have to accept this into it. And it's quite weird because it's a very big block and we are proposing this BCG, mm -hmm. which, is, um, which is quite interesting up to a certain extent, even though people are not interested in sustainability mm -hmm. rather than thinking about how we're going to come back to the old position where we were before the COVID. Right. Right. But anyhow, once you have put this forward, I think they have to well, you know, take along these concerns and make sure right. that these sets of policies are also going to benefit you know, the smaller players within the economy as well. Now, let's look at some of the list of the uh, participants for the summit and some of the more controversial ones, uh, particularly the Saudi Arabian um, Prime Minister, Crown Prince uh, bin Al Saud, uh, bin Mohammed Al Saud or yes. MBS who is allegedly is behind the murder or you know, Khashoggi, yeah. torture and killing of a well-known uh, Saudi Arabian um, journalist in Turkey. But Thailand has the, the government absolutely zero uh, reservations about inviting him as a special guest for the airtake mm -hmm. as now Thailand is resuming or restoring a normal diplomatic ties after three decades or nearly three decades of of uh, absence due to the so-called blue diamond mm -hmm. uh, saga what, what do you make of it i i, I mean you are an international relations uh, expert should we just turn a blind eye to uh, you know the the very reputation or infamy of the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia and welcomed this as a shrill and very pragmatic move by the general, by the Prayut General Shah administrations for having selected, you know, there were three, right? Macron, uh, MBS, and uh, and Prime Minister Hun Sen, who the, the last one will, will, it will not be in town due to the COVID-19 infection. So, so is that fair to, to Say this is just the way the world and international relation works. We should just forget about human rights and all that. Um, I think that's that's one of the sad part. Uh, even Unsen, which is much smaller in terms of economic size and so on, still had what we call, I'm sorry to use this word, still had the balls uh, not to invite uh, Myanmar. Because apart mm -hmm. from economic interest, uh, the stance in the international uh, political system is also mm -hmm. very important as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so in order to be accepted in longer term, I think you need to you know, be able to reflect some sort of a value, which goes along you know, with the international norm. And I think for, for the Thai policymakers, they would say that, okay, if we could get a couple of deals done with the Saudi Arabia, that would be enough. Yeah, but in the long term, it would mean that we would become more and more irrelevant. And when we become more irrelevant in global politics, in regional politics, then the power or the ability in order to negotiate in other issues would become much weaker. So what they are looking at, they say that they might benefit out of some investments and agreements by MBS. Yes, it will be good, but it will be short term. But for the longer term and the stance of the Thai diplomatic uh, respect that you know it, we have always had, you know, would be something that would be too expensive, and we wouldn't be able to, you know, regain that. But anyhow, Kamala Harris would be coming, and I, I've seen one of the press release, and one of the main important issues that she would be discussing would be about Myanmar. So, so General Rayut has to have a good, you know, answer, and you can't get away with this. You will be questioned. You will be, you know, uh, pressured in order to take some sort of a stance in these issues. Uh, you, you can't get away with it. 
I think if you if you want to be irrelevant, you don't want to discuss these issues. But so your power or your ability within the international uh, international arena would also slowly decline as well, which is not good in the longer term. Okay, now I uh, just have one more question. Um, what what would be your advice in the next you know for General Brayut for the next forty uh, eight or sixty hours? He you know the proper summit would start tomorrow morning, which is I th I think sum it up. You know he he needs yeah. to be able to sum it up that what what Thai people have regained have gained from 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 you know uh, you know hosting this meeting. Uh, he he should be able to clearly tell us. What's the benefit? And he needs to open some certain type of space for criticism as well. So the direction that the Thai government, uh, the businesses, or even the civil society would would take has to be going together in a well balanced manner. Uh, we just don't want this to become just an event, and then that's it. Uh, we've uh, lost three billion, uh, and if he, I'm sure now there might be some uh, possibility that he might, you know. Say something <laughs> that could be a bit controversial. So I think he needs to be a bit careful on that. Um, he needs to push forward the issues which are relevant uh, in the inter international arena. I think meeting leaders for the past couple of days should have given him some sort of a, um, you could say, confidence to to speak out on some certain right. issues. And more importantly, he should be able to tell us what we have gained out of out of you know hosting this this particular meeting. Do you think you will give him a passing grade uh, after the conclusion of the summit on on Saturday? Ah, oh, yes, I would say. And what would C be plus. that? Yeah, yeah. You, you will. <laughs> I'm sorry. I C plus or B. I, a I, C plus, plus or B. Yep. Yep. Um. Okay. Well, <laughs> C plus, plus. You still pass, right? <laughs> you still pass. Still pass. But but the thing is, there should be many other things that he should have used this particular, you know. Um, Opportunity to push forward further interest. Now, if we end up with only one further bilateral agreement with Australia, I think it's too expensive. Three billion baht would be too expensive. But if we could, you know, uh, revive Jade Hepa from Jade Hepa one to Jade Hepa two. Now, if we could have some sort of an agreement with China, because now we are just receiving uh, what we call uh, leeway. On the on the focus on what we call ASEAN plus T and ASEP, there's nothing special, and we are more trading with China, but we are more in deficit. We need to deal with this issue. If he could deal with these things more uh, in a much more positive light, then I would say, okay, you have passed. But so far, this is just a thought, you know, and, okay, and which is just a party. It's just that. a party, but just a banquet. Is, banquet. Yep. Uh, if he doesn't make us what we call, um, you know. Uh, been embarrassed more than this, then it's okay. C minus is something that we could say that he's passed. But well, just a final, the final, best final yeah. scores. <laughs> just a final, final question. Since you mentioned China, um, one of the unique thing of APEC in a way, since it was formed around three decades ago, is that Taiwan is also a member of APEC along with China, and although the Taiwanese president is not coming to Bangkok. Uh, a representative from the private sector will be in town. What do you make of that? Uh, and what do you think about the Thai policies toward China as well as Taiwan over the past few years? Uh, are you? Do you have any particular concern? Is it fair to say that Thailand might be already be revolving? too close to the Chinese orbit. I mean, do we want to see Thailand being overwhelmed by the Chinese sphere of influence, of, of investments, economy like Cambodia or not? What, what's your take about the rise of China I, and, and I, I its think relation? We have been playing, it's very clear that we have been tilting towards China a bit more. Uh, like we, we agree, you could say that we agree with the stance of what happened in Myanmar. We don't want to talk about this. We have this Mekong issue, which we don't want to talk about this. In terms of economy, we have become more and more dependent on China. This is very clear. But in regards to Taiwan, I think we are still playing a good two-faced game. We are still benefiting from Taiwan, but at the same time, we are also not being meddling in, in, in this conflict. 
yet. Yeah. I think we are quite far away from that issue as well. So in this case, we are okay. Uh, apart from if there's an issue and that you have to make a stance in UN, <laughs> I think that that's important that we have to take a certain stance which might not go along with the Chinese interest. But but at the moment, in regards to the Taiwan issue, we are doing okay. I would say we are doing okay. And I think um, with China's issue, a lot of uh, academics has been saying that since the meeting last week, it seems that China would become more and more internally obsessed with its own mm. problem. Hmm. So it's it's so its ability to to squeeze others to go into its own direction would become lesser. So if everything is good in China, they would try to exert their power elsewhere, and that could be a problem for us. But in this case, it seems that China would be inward looking more, and it seems that we will have more breathing space. And I think we should take this opportunity to find better alliances. Now, like for us, I for me, I teach political economy. I clearly see that. Look, uh, US is the future, EU is the future, other new markets is the future, because if you can't uh, compete or level out the trade deficit with China, this is not a healthy relation, only in economic terms. Yeah. So, so, so we have to be able to use this to balance it. And, and I think that C has lost it as well yeah, with, with, with the outburst with Trudeau. I think this is the first time I'm seeing him, you know, getting... <laughs> You know, out, out of out of the thing. So it seems that the political system in China is not that stable as much as we might think that it should be. Uh, so, so this is a good chance if we are clever enough uh, to slowly step back and and be able to balance our interests okay, within other superpowers much more effectively. Well, um, with that note, I really thank you, Chan Viro Ali, for spending. Uh, your valuable time with us here at uh, Council of English. And I truly hope we should be able to have the honor of having you speaking to us up on other international uh, relation related issues in the near future. Um, do take good pleasure. care. Happy uh, thank you. So thank you uh, again, thank you very much. Council of English will be reporting, do a summary, new summary tomorrow, um, Friday as well as Saturday uh, regarding the EPEC um, 2022 summit here in Bangkok. And and if actually, if you have time with Jan Riro, we yes, might even I... want to phone in for, you know, and ask you to give the grade uh, later tomorrow or Saturday Definitely for five or 10 minutes. Because I've so, been looking at what have happened, you know, since mm -hmm. each declaration from each meeting, we could clearly see at the end, if there's a Bangkok declaration, we could right. clearly map it out with other meetings okay. in, in the past years and you could grade them. Wonderful. Very, very so, so probably we will try to ring you up later tomorrow uh, or Saturday and get you to uh, grade uh, General Prayut Chan Osha performance. With that note, uh, this is Pravid Rojanaprit from Council of English and with Jan Virod Ali from Thammasat University. Have a good evening. Well, I think that uh, the benefits of being host of APEC is uh, a plenty. Uh, first of all, we are able to uh, show to the region that uh, Thailand as host economy of APEC is ready. Uh, we're confident uh, to host a major international meeting after the COVID uh, crisis. So it's kind of a confidence building as well towards Thailand and towards the, the region. And also as for uh, our contribution to the uh, APEC framework itself. Uh, we are pushing forward the biocircular green uh, economy uh, model, which will actually be a possible uh, solution uh, towards reviving the, the downturn of the global economy after, after COVID. I think for the Thai people as well, this will be very uh, beneficial uh, because we will be able to show to the world that we're ready to open up uh, and connect with uh, the world and of course transform the global economy and, and, and businesses in becoming more responsible, becoming more, more balanced and more, more green as per our uh, theme, which is open, connect and, and balance. So with this confidence, everything, I think that for the Thai people, uh, tourism will be an important issue that uh, will be able to help uh, restart uh, towards uh, 
the years ahead uh, for tourists to come back to, to Thailand as well. So I think benefits in all uh, fronts, uh, both uh, politi politically and economically for Thailand and also for the region. I think that the Thai government as host of APEC 2022 has in, been in preparation for APEC for uh, over, over a year already um, in all aspects in terms of logistics, in terms of sub substance, in terms of uh, public relations, in terms of security. So therefore we have national committees on all these areas under the uh, big national committee on, on preparation for APEC uh, in which the Prime Minister is uh, chair uh, him, himself. But for each su subcommittee, they've gone into detail uh, causing us no uh, actual uh, concern or worry in any particular uh, issue. Uh, it's just that in terms of implementation, we have to follow through to have all of the measures, all of the preparations go into place. Like for my part, in terms of building awareness, it's a difficult, challenging issue, but we've tried our best. We've uh, reached out to partners and engaged with media. On the security side, that's also one important issue uh, that we have to uh, follow through in terms of uh, implementation. So therefore, as you may have noticed, the couple of days we've uh, 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 increased the security uh, level in certain uh, areas uh, near the Green Sirikit uh, Center as, as, a as a precaution. And it's comprehensive. We have uh, information and uh, uh, intelligence and we have, we have surveyed uh, many uh, parts of uh, the news and the media and the movements just to be on the safe side to ensure the best security to ensure the best uh, logistics arrangement uh, and ensure the best uh, media relations and uh, coverage so it's a, a whole uh, big task that we have been uh, concerned with so not any particular issue in, uh, in, in particular but we are uh, well prepared and ready this is aside of course from the substantive preparations which have been going on very very uh, well